Woody! Woody! Oh. It's kind of dreary, it's kind of gloomy, but me and Woody are both stoked that there's no snow and that my driveway is no longer a giant sloppy mess. So I'm going to take this time, this moment, this second to explain to you how I rig my kayak for catfishing and what I look for in a catfishing kayak. I'm Spencer, this is River Certified. So there she is, rigged up in all of her catfishing glory. My new canoe, Frontier 12. Absolutely love this kayak for a variety of different reasons. Now the number one thing I like about this kayak is it's big. It's big, stable, and when you're fishing for big fish, the last thing I want to worry about is flipping or tipping or getting wobbly. I want to focus on catching the fish. And that's my favorite thing about these things. They're, they're 41 inches wide now. I'm not here to tell you what kayak to get. I'm here to tell you to get the kayak that best suits your needs. For me, I want something stable. So that's what I fish out of. Now, on to how I got it rigged. Woody, what are you snorting at? Start at the front. I like kayak with a rigid front handle. I got in my front hatch, I always store my rod holders in in the front hatch. Now they're sitting right there. I got two others because I can rig them up in the back if I want to run four rods. But most of the time I just run two, especially in small streams and creeks and whatnot. Keep my uh, keep my anchor right there. Moving on down. Oh, I also have my extra cable length for my transducer stored in there. This plug go, obviously goes in the sonar. And I also put my battery in here. So when I'm fishing, I usually don't take this stuff and I keep keep a bag with, it's kind of my catch-all spot. Keep that bag in here. You can take this out. So I take it out, put my bag in there, and then all that stuff in that bag usually doesn't go. So that's that, front hatch, gear storage, rod holder storage, anchor storage, and then my catch-all when I'm on the water. Here. I got a ram ball and I use these oval washers and bolts and bolted just a standard round ram base to the track. Same over here. And then this post is what I put my camera on. So I got a helix side imaging and side imaging is cool. It doesn't work as well out of a kayak as it does a boat. The, the, vis the, the image is a little distorted compared to using it out of a boat, but it's still cool to see stuff out the side. And once you get used to it, you'll know what different blobs mean. It's not a crystal clear image, but transducer mount that's on a removable ram ball, so I can move this from kayak to kayak and move my fish finder from kayak to kayak. These guys, so these are zigzag zag cleats, and my plan is to eventually add a pedal drive here. When you have the propeller hanging out the back of the boat, that create the current drags it, so you can't. It's it's really tough to tie off to a log with your propeller upriver. Better hurry up, my vegetables are gonna be done. Okay. So with the zigzag cleats right there, imagine you got a pedal system in here, which I will eventually. You're pedaling, pedaling, pedaling up river, and then you got, I wanna say lower unit, but this is a kayak, <laughs> so it's not a lower unit. We're gonna call it the lower unit. Your the trolling motor? The propeller from my pedal drive, when the uh -huh. current hits it, it swings your back end around. So normally most people clip off clip off and you can do this without a pedal drive you clip off to a log clip and then you run your line through the zigzag cleat and you're secure but with the propeller in the, the water that drag wants to swing your kayak around so another method you can do is you're pedaling 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 come by a log what are you are you a log oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you clip off to the log and then you run your line through the zigzag cleat up here and you're facing up river now, the one slick thing about new canoes is the seat swivels. So you spin around and then you're fishing out the back, just like so. Oh. Oh. Same works if you have a trolling motor in the back too, because the trolling motor catches on current. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Rod holders, I got Scotty's at the moment. I'm looking at a few other companies. There's some things I like about these. I've used these for a long time. But there's some, some things I don't care for so much that I'm looking at changing. So these are what I got right now. Seat, seats, my storage. One thing I really like is having everything stored in my seat. I took some starboard. 
I think this quarter inch starboard. And I zip tied it to the railing, then zip tied a bungee cord to it. And this space conveniently holds the tackle box right there. So I got one here with some of my catfish in it. Then I got my other one on the other side with all my hooks and swivels and beads and stuff. Then I got my pliers zip tied there and eventually I'm sure I'll have stuff zip tied in here so it doesn't keep falling out of my pack in the back. But right now this is my catch all. It's a tackle web. These things are pretty slick. I'll, uh, I'll link them in the description below. They're kind of pricey but this one's going on, shoot, four years, five years. Holding my sinkers, holding bait cutting shears, grips, bobbers. My brush grips, got my tow rope, stringer, leader line, fillet knife, you know, all that good stuff in the pack on the back. My life vest, I usually just leave it sitting on the seat. I used to I used to store it in that, that hatch up front, but the problem is it gets wet. And eventually that moisture causes this thing to deploy, which is expensive and could potentially damage your kayak on top of that. Zigzag cleats, rod holders, and I got my second camera post on a ram screwball. It wobbles a little bit. I'm thinking about putting a round base and making it more solid, but that'll do for now. Then usually my bait cooler. Whew, that's, that's, that's ripe. Okay, I'm gonna close that. So yeah, my bait cooler goes in the back and you have to make sure with your bait cooler it doesn't match the color of your kayak. That's essential. It's also a joke, and a bad one. Anyway, moving back. I got this plate that is designed to reinforce the transom of the boat. That way I can mount a trolling motor on the back here. So if I want to go on Easy Street, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't want to hassle with the battery, but I can still mount a trolling motor right here. Now, if I get a pedal drive, that's probably gonna change. Right now I got this, so I have the option of mountain trolling motor. My my little flag represent Grandview Wrestling back in the good old days. But that's who's flying out the back of my kayak. Over here I got my anchor trolley. So what I'll do is if I'm anchoring, clip my anchor to here so I can slide it down out the back and my kayak isn't swaying as much. And when I'm done, slide it forward, grab my anchor, and I don't have to crawl clear in the back to grab my anchor. Or I can put my drift sock on here and adjust the spot my drift sock's sitting at so it'll uh, adjust my drift as I'm doing my drift thing. Works pretty slick. So that's it, that's how I rig my kayak. If you got questions, put them in the comments. I'll be glad to, glad, glad to answer them. Don't have to twist my arm too hard to talk about fishing or kayak fishing or cat fishing or you know, just yeah, just, just fishing. So any questions, put them in the comments. I'll definitely answer them. Either way, really appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something, got some ideas on how you want to rig your kayak, because that was the whole point of this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you catch a giant. Would you like to tell us about this kayak catfish rig based yeah, on sure. your extensive experience <laughs> catfishing from your little plastic pirate ship?